A snowstorm, record cold temperatures warming up, the atmospheric river returns, and an ice storm in the east. Well, there's your weather forecast, my friend. Somebody in the comments said, cold rain, you talk too much about the weather. Just get to the weather. Well, there you go. Now you can swipe away. This is unrehearsed, unscripted, and straight up to you from me, my friends. I give you the best analysis I've got so that you can be prepared as you go through your week every single day. We talk about what drives the weather. So when someone comes up to you and says, it's going to snow, should I go to the store and buy bread and milk? Well, you can say, yes, you should, because cold rain said it's going to be a big one. Or you could say, it's just going to be flurries. What are you worried about? Anyway, get those bread milk sandwiches ready because we've got a big snowstorm unfolding today. We're going to look at the pattern, too, at the end of the show and uh, kind of do it in reverse today. The models are tripping over themselves yet again. So if you're looking for winter weather to return after the warm-up, take heart. We've got some good news for you. And again, I don't edit the stuff and give you a big run-on sentence of weather. If you want that, check out Max Velocity, Ryan Hall. They do a good job, but they just edit it out. And, uh, you know, I'm going to give you the best I've got, including the thumbnails. We're not just going to go, oh, wow, or get ready, or just amazing every single day. We're going to give you some stuff to make it a little bit fun and educational here. And we're going to start today with this snow event. Look at this. We've got a big swath of snow through the Corn Belt headed in toward the Ohio Valley. Imping reports reveal snow all the way through Iowa. I Ames over to Cedar Rapids, Burlington into Springfield, Illinois, Peoria, and back into just north of Indianapolis now in Muncie, seeing some snow with some of the reports coming in. Snow into the Lee of the Lakes, Buffalo, Watertown, Syracuse, up here, um, Rochester, <clears throat> excuse me, all seeing some snow flakes falling at this hour, and that will continue to pile up the snow. We're going to look and just see how much snow my friends are going to get through this area. Even some winter weather advisories now popping up in the mid-Atlantic, in the Philly metro region, and expect to see more of those, maybe even a winter storm warning or two here. Winter storm warnings up in West Virginia, parts of Pennsylvania, Southern Ohio, Central Indiana, and winter weather advisories connecting that all the way back up to Eastern Montana, where we have winter storm warnings again as well. Extreme cold warning up here in parts of North Dakota and Minnesota with cold weather advisories and alerts all the way through the south. Even extreme cold watch up here in the lowlands of South Carolina and the uh, central portion of South Carolina and the southern portion of North Carolina. So a lot of alerts going on out here. Fog advisories down here in Texas and across the deep south. So watch out if you're driving around. Take it a little bit slow. But we're going to start here with the future radar in the east. So we go through the afternoon, look that for that snow to really pick up through um, here in uh, central uh, Illinois, back through Indiana, and over into southern Ohio as we get on in toward the afternoon hours, and that will rapidly spread to the east. We have a very potent upper level, mid level disturbance moving through, and we're seeing very good saturation up through the snow, snow growth zone. The temperatures are very low, very, very cold up there, and so the freezing levels are low. And you're seeing a lot of uh, impressive uh, snow production. So it's very efficient snow making with this system. And we're seeing ratios higher than 10 to 1, even approaching 20 to 1 in some of these areas. We'll see some um, upper level forcing take shape and some snow banding setting up in these areas as we go through the day and head in toward the evening. You kind of see the radar trying to focus some of those heavy bands up through uh, Columbus and in toward the Pittsburgh region here as we go through the overnight hours. You see some of those heavy bands set up there. And so where those bands set up, that's where you're going to maximize your snowfall. And that's why we have uh, winter storm warnings up here. Some of these areas could pick up, you know, in the neighborhood of 10 inches or snow. My friend Hugh over here in uh, southwestern Pennsylvania could end up seeing 8, 10 inches of snow out of this if things come together just right. Got a couple of friends up here in Ohio as well that uh, routinely comment and let me know what they're seeing. You guys will see plenty of snow through Ohio. So, Jen, I don't want to hear about no snow and no cold in Ohio anymore. You're going to get some, all right? So tell me how much you got here in West Virginia. You're looking at some snow as well as we go through the evening hours. That will be tapering off as we approach daybreak tomorrow here in the Ohio Valley. And all of that will be heading east. And, boy, overnight tonight into the morning hours tomorrow, going to see that snow really pick up eastern Pennsylvania 
into the Delmarva region over toward Philly, New York City getting in on the snow, Long Island going to see a lot of snow here as well, and over toward Cape Cod and eastern and southern Massachusetts, really south of the Mass Pike, that's where we're looking at the most snow falling in these areas, and it's going to be in the neighborhood of two to five, even six inches in spots where those those bands set up. And so this thing is, it, the, the exact track of it's going to matter. You can see a pretty thin swath of snow. So it tracks a little bit farther north. You get uh, some of your northern uh, most zones here in the four, into the uh, heavier snow bands. If it tracks a little farther to the south, well, it stays a little bit uh, you know, farther south of the Boston area and up here in Rhode Island as well. So that's what we're looking at. We're gonna take a tour of some of these maps. We're gonna start here in the Indianapolis office National Weather Service office, you can see a big swath of three to seven to nine inches of snow through the center portion of uh, Indiana here, Greensburg, Richmond, and then over into uh, Ohio, we start to see those same amounts in the Ohio region as well. Columbus down to New Lexington, Athens, five inches of snow. And then we get over here into West Virginia, you start to get into some of the higher terrain, really gonna squeeze that out pretty efficiently. And those high rates are gonna allow that snow to be fluffy and light and kind of pile up. And it's going to be windy too, by the way, winds working in in tandem with an Arctic boundary that's coming through that's going to really drop those temperatures. And it's going to feel like winter up toward Uniontown, seven, eight, 10 inches of snow up there in those areas. We Take a look at the Pittsburgh office. Look at this. Pittsburgh, you're looking at four to six inches up here. La Trobe, five inches, Indiana. And uh, then it gets a little bit lighter up as we get on in toward central, north central Pennsylvania until you get around the lake effect snows. Cleveland, you're going to see some of those lake effect snows pick, uh, pick up and uh, look at six to eight inches of snow up there. And as we take a look on up farther north, Erie, Ed uh, Edinburgh, Corey, Meadville, all looking at 8 to 10 inches, maybe even 12 as you get closer to the lake. All right, these lakes are warm, but they're starting to freeze over, and so they will do so, but then the warm air will come in next week and maybe thaw some of that out and keep the lake effect snow machine going into January. Somebody made that comment in the comment section. I thought that was good, a uh, good observation as well, but plenty of snow in the lee of Lake Erie. Looking here at Buffalo, New York, boy, look at this. Got some uh, winds just blowing along the lake and really seeing the, the um, snow pile up here to the east of Lake Ontario. 22 inches of snow possible just north of Pulaski, 19 here in Fulton. And so it is a, a big snowy Saturday as we go through the weekend. You guys are going to see a lot of snow here and that will taper off quickly out toward the east. Utica, two inches. Old Forge, three inches. And again, these amounts can vary a little bit here by an inch or two. So a lot of stuff going on. If we go way over into the uh, Mount Holly forecast office, here's your widespread three to five inch snowfall uh, setting up where those snow bands come together. Maybe see a, another inch or so on top of these totals. But um, Looking, looking pretty good here. Wilmington, four inches. Cherry Hill, four inches over toward uh, Trenton, looking at four inches. Philly, you're looking at four or five inches here. And we get on out toward the um, Long Island uh, area here, and we're picking up, uh, again, three to four inches of snow up toward New York City. Going to be in the two to four inch snow range. Actually, we go up here into New York City and we can see uh, New York City proper looking at two inches. But uh, she get on out here toward eastern Long Island, Southampton, Montauk, looking at four or five inches out here as well. And then one more stop up here in Boston. And you can see Boston not looking at a lot out of this one unless it shifts to the north just a little bit. Could bring those two to four inch amounts up toward you as well. But certainly uh, looking at right now about an inch or so. We get on down here toward Rhode Island and Connecticut that will pick up as farther south and east you go over your Cape Cod looking at two to four inches as well and again where those snow bands set up just right you could really dump you know up to a half an inch to an inch to an inch and a half an hour for a time so it could really pile up quickly and again the track of this will matter as we go on out through the rest of the course of the day we'll be able to see a little bit better where the system will track and the models will kind of converge on that too but uh in any event, a lot of the I-95 cities, you guys are going to be seeing snow fall. And uh, the snow drought will be over, and then it will warm up. <laughs> there you go, my friends. Here are the wind chills. Look at this. Big, big time wind chills. Brutally cold air is working in. And as we go through the day today, we're looking at wind chills minus 30. And as we get into the evening hours, we'll see minus 40s uh, in terms of wind chills poking in here into um 
I see what time we are here. We're at three Z. That will be uh, maybe uh, this evening and as we get into the overnight hours, we're looking at uh, wind chills dropping into the minus 30s, even minus 40s showing up here in North Dakota and Minnesota. That is brutally cold. You will get frostbite very, very quickly. Look, minus 45 here on the border uh, toward Fargo. My goodness, it's going to be very, very cold wind chills, cold wind chills making it all the way into the east. As we head through the afternoon tomorrow, it's going to be bitterly cold. Those wind chills will be surging south, getting into the single digits here in the Carolinas. Minus 20s back into Illinois, Indiana, and Iowa. Again, it's going to be frigid, my friends. And that will just move to the east and eventually moderate as we get on in toward and through the early portion of the week. But as you head out the door Tuesday uh, or Monday, head back home from work Monday evening, looking at those wind chills in the teens all the way as far as the southeast. It'll drop in the single digits probably again overnight. And as you head on out to work Tuesday, we are looking at wind chills very, very, very cold for much of the eastern portion of the country. And that will eventually moderate and things will get back toward normal and rapidly surge above normal as we get on in toward the week. Here are your wind, here's your wind forecast as we go through the day on Sunday. Look for a windy, windy day in portions of the east from Texas all the way up to the northeast. And that will continue through the day on Sunday and in the evening hours, gusts in the 20s. And uh, that will just feel bitterly cold as that Arctic front moves through. And that will then taper off as we head into Monday. Still windy up here in the northeast. But that is your forecast for the upcoming weekend, the early portion of the week, including the snow and the cold weather. Now, one more thing we have to keep on our radar is this big atmospheric river event. We've got a lot of rain. You guys have seen a lot of flooding up here in the northwest. Get a little bit of a break this weekend, but look what happens as we get toward uh, Sunday morning. More rain coming in here to the Pacific Northwest and into Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and on and on and on and on through the two-week period, you will pick up much, much, much more rain. This European Ensemble Precipitation Estimate, coastal range, the Cascades, looking at another foot of rain over the next couple of weeks, will not be quite as bad in the lowlands, but all of that's going to run off and then build in here uh, into the uh, valleys, and you'll see uh, several, you know, rounds of heavy rain through the course of the next two weeks to bring your totals up to maybe around four to six inches here around Seattle and back in toward Portland and places like that. Some of this will eventually fall in the form of snow, but it's still going to be very, very, very wet and rainy. Floods are going to continue to be a problem out here. So just be aware of all of that as you head out, uh, you know, to toward uh, in, into your work week and then beyond. Okay, so that's what's going on now. Here is the two meter temperature anomaly as seen by the latest run of the European ensembles. This is not the latest run. The zero Z run was from last night. It goes out to two weeks. The six Z run only goes out to six days. I'm going to show you the zero Z run uh, just because it goes out longer and we can look at a longer lead. So here's our big Arctic blast. And then what happens? Well, you see that Arctic blast move out of the picture and get replaced by all of these warm colors here. And even these really, really, really warm colors where it starts to turn white, okay? But look at this. We're 129 hours out. This is next Thursday, and there's still chilly weather along the East Coast. Why is that? I'm going to show you here in a second. Another surge of Arctic air up here north of the border, poised to come in next weekend to the Tennessee, uh, just northern parts of the Tennessee Valley, the Ohio Valley, and then that will swing east in the upper southeast as we head towards Saturday and Sunday. Remember how all this was just red as far as the eye can see? Well, guess what the models are trying to show now? Some of these fronts making it a little farther to the south, and we're going to see some cold air damming along the east coast. Still going to be plenty warm out west and toward the central portion of the country. Look what happens when we get on out to our 198 hours. Another one of those, and of course, the model's keeping it flat as it's trying to average everything out. We get on out toward Monday the 22nd. Northeast still very chilly up here. You're not going to get a break from the cold weather. It might not be as cold, but it will still be cold. Through the 23rd and the 24th, we get into the 24th, cool across the north, and some of those temperatures are a little bit muted here in the upper southeast due to wedging. Remember when all of this was over here? Well, it's kind of backed off a little bit, hadn't it? And there it is, and it sort of it continues to surge as we head on in. This is not really a wintertime pattern for the entire U.S., okay? I want to get that, make, make sure you understand that. 
But as we get on out in time, look what the models are doing. Look at this. This is the 360 hour, the end of the ensemble range. Um, this was, when was this? December the 9th, okay? And look what has happened. And on December the 9th, for 106 to 360 hours out, this is centered on Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve morning. Look where the ridge was when the model ran on December the 9th, right here. Look where the ridge is on the latest run, right back here. You see what's going on here, my friends? I've been talking about this. The, the ridge, models want to put the ridge on the East Coast, and over time, as we get closer, the ridge is going back to the West. And look at these anomalies up here in Canada. When you see a signal with a blue anomaly here in eastern Canada and a ridge maybe in the center portion of the country, think cooler than normal up here in the eastern portion, the, the northeast, and then potentially wedging down in this area. And that will allow Arctic highs to build out of Canada across the northern tier and send cold weather down the eastern slopes of the Appalachians. That's what this pattern is reminiscent of. That's what the pattern is telling you here, okay? And so if you take a look at the actual pattern itself, here's what's going on. Ridge builds in, that big flat pancake ridge builds in. Yeah, it's going to get warmer as we head on in toward the end of the week through the weekend. Another lobe of cold air slips through. We'll just see how cold it actually gets. The model's are trending a little bit chillier with that as we head toward next weekend and then you get another flat pancake ridge again and uh, then the model just wants to build that ridge and just surge it up again and uh, but it keeps it this time in the center of the country instead of migrating it migrating it all the way to the east that big block over here stays just anchored in the Aleutians which we don't really like to see for a big wintry pattern for the U.S. but still this is not as bad as it was looking and look at this this is yesterday's 18Z GFS run, and I want to caveat this. I'm not forecasting this to happen. What I'm trying to show you is in the middle of a bad pattern, parts of the country can still get winter storms, and this is how it happens. You get a big Arctic high moving out of Canada. That big cold anomaly up in eastern Canada helps to uh, provide some confluence for this high to slide to the east, build down like this, and if you have a well-timed southern storm coming in, Look what happens. Ice storm in the southern Appalachians and, and snow and a winter storm here for parts of the southern mid-Atlantic and then the mid-Atlantic. And that high is not going to stay. It's going to be transitory, but it's going to be a lot colder at the surface than what the model is depicting if this were to play out. So take heart. You don't have to have the perfect winter pattern to get a big winter storm, especially in the east, okay? That's just how it works, how the weather works. These models don't they're not infallible in the long range. As we move out in time, we're seeing the ridge axis continue to shift back toward the west. And as that happens, you open the door for wedging and cold air to work into the east port, eastern portion of the country. You get a well-timed system moving through and everything lines out right. You get a big winter storm and what appeared to be a hostile pattern. That's what we have going on. I hope I explained that well. Just because you see a bunch of warm maps on social media doesn't mean that two weeks from now it's actually going to be that warm and that hostile. And then in January, we could see things flip around. It could be a very, very bitterly cold pattern. Some of the operational models are already trying to bring Arctic intrusions back into a large portion of the U.S. We'll have to rely on the ensembles as best we can out in time. That's a smart way to go about it, and that's how we're going to approach it. So that's what the show is about today, my friends. That's it. I hope you have a wonderful Saturday. Those that are seeing flakes, enjoy those flakes, and let me know what you're seeing in the comments, and let me know what kind of weather you like as well. If there's anything I can be a prayer about, please put it in there, and I will be sure and do that. I pray for you guys every day. Continue to pray for this channel. And my friends, that's it for today. Hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll be back tomorrow with another update. Take care. Bye.